Hi, everyone. Welcome to my talk and welcome to PyCon 2021. Oh, uh, this is talk about cleanup jungle tests with PyTest, Factory Boy, and Fakers. Let me introduce myself. My name is Kanisan Sutam. People call me first or Cars or Kani. So I am software developer in Unity Helsinki, Finland. Previously, I working in the ThoughtWorks Thailand uh, <clears throat> for two years ago. And uh, I just recently removed, uh, relocated to here. So nice. Let's get started. Okay, so what we will you get from this talk today? So what is the refactoring? So this talk, we're gonna talk about the refactoring for sure. And the test refactoring, which is the thing that we want to mention like mainly in these talks, easy to understand, easy to write and easy to run the test, which is the three topics that we want to get from test refactoring. And I'm gonna show you how like a PyTest factory boy fakers to help you get better developer experience and help you like do the refactoring on the test quite smoothly. The last part, I'm gonna show and share about how to adapt that technique above gradually to your team and your project. So this is a disclaimer that I want to mention before we go to the topic. So this sharing is only from my work and only from my work experience and observation from like a community and friends from community like a Thailand and Finland, also my colleagues and my senior and team lead. So yes, this slide may have a lot of uptake. So one thing I want to mention here, like uh, this is the slide that I hope I can make is like a document. So people can come back and read it again later on if they want. Cool. So all feedback are welcome if you have any feedback for me for this slide, for this topic. So please give me the feedback. Thank you so much in advance. Cool. So let's give us our test. Uh, before we go, we need to talk about the refactoring. What is refactoring? The refactoring is a different technique for restructure, the existing code, but it's not change the behavior. So this is the point. Though we don't change the behavior, the refactor that we want is like to make the code clean, understandable and extendable easily. This is about refactoring. So if you see in the graph below, the graph here is talking about like a cause of decay. If like a, your system, your software is not that refactoring. So the cost is gonna increase, increase and increase every release. Compare with the refactoring continuously. So this system is the cost of decay is gonna keep like maintain in the same level, which is a resource. But at the first point, you may need a lot of, a bit, a bit about the effort, but in the long term, it's quite a smoothly in the same like result you need it. That's why, we need refactor and sure that everyone in here, like every developer or everyone here, left to refactoring for sure. That's why we're gonna talking about test refactor today. So why we need to refactor the test is because the test is our code as well. That's why we need to maintain and keep them clean as well. Test refactoring, so, we want to keep the test looking good. And this is the three things we want here. First thing, easy to understand. The second thing, easy to write the test and easy to run the test. And the last one, three things here is a simple thing that you're gonna mention a lot when we do like a refactoring. Let's go to one by one. Easy to understand, let's say, when the tests are failed because something happened, we need to try to answer the question like, a, so how long is take to like, a, which tests are failed? How long you're gonna take like, a, how to understand the test, why it failed, why something happened? 
and we need to find some root cause, right, and make them pass. So when we we factoring, we need to talk about like how long it takes. So if it's easy enough to understand, like people for sure, people like a like a run the test, like a run the test because it's like okay, it's quite understandable, and you get the point why you want to run the test. Next one, easy to write the test. Yes, people don't want to write the test because sometimes it's hard and spend lots of time. Like uh, for us, like I want to add some features, and when I add some features, something happen. The test are fail, and then I make a test pass, and then I want to add some more tests. And where should I write the test? Yes. So this is a part, and another thing is how hard. I can know like a how to write the test. Do they have like a utility functions or something like a helper for writing a test easily? But the last thing, the test is quite hard to set up. It needs a lot of like a code to mocking the function related. Also have bunch of code for like a create a test figure the data the data that you want to use in your test. I can confirm that like the last part is is a bit hard. For sure, at the starting point, if you if once you have like a concrete standard for like a making test figure, it's gonna help you a lot. But when you create some like a greenfield project and you need to set up that one, it's quite hard. Today, I'm gonna show you how make it easy. And the last part is easy to run the test. Yes, it's Sometimes it's easy to write, it's easy to understand, but it's quite slow. So people people don't want to touch the test. People even don't want to run the test as well because it's too slow. As the developer, why us? So we want the fast feedback loop, right? So sometimes, for example, like you run the test and you go to get some coffee, go to restroom and go back to table, the test still running. My God. So then after an hour and the test tell you that it's fail. Definitely you lose one hour already for your working time. It's a bad thing, right? Good test should be easy to run enough. It's quite fast enough to get your feedback, like a real time feedback or like a fast enough feedback. So that's why we need to concern that. Three things here, test, should be easy to understand and easy to write and easy to run. Three things here gonna make the developer experience on writing tests quite smoothly and nicely. Okay, here today I'm gonna show you some techniques that I, I have learned so far and using some tools to improve my test code best. And I will share you all Pythonista. Why I say Python is that because like a PyTest, Factory Boy, Faker, or those techniques here is not specific for Django, but Django is good example one that I pick it because it's like a, have some concrete example for here. Okay. I mentioned we have PyTest, we have Factory Boy and Faker here, and we're gonna go to one by one. First, how PyTest give you better understanding. So here, let's see an example in Django test and PyTest. So Django test here look like this. This is like a simple test that I have created, like with some few models. So in, you can see in left-hand side, the left-hand side is the thing that like, okay, we should create a one order and we have some setup thing for one order and then the assets or something like that. And the right-hand side is the results when I run the test. So here you can see that in the right hand side, you can like, okay, we have a test here and the test in represent in like a dot in a chunk. So you can see like a below system check here, you can see the dot. It's the test. We have eight dots, we have eight test. Dots mean pass. After I change to PyTest, here is the result. You can see in the right hand side that Okay, when you run PyTest, PyTest also show you like a, which, where is the test file, how many test files we have, and how many tests we have as well, like a tick green one. So PyTest give you lots of information about the test. 
For sure, with PyTest, it's like a help you get more understandable about like, a, okay, which uh, file test we have or something like that. It's give you more information. So go back to the left-hand side, something a bit changed in assets. So in assets, it's quite more simple. So we don't use self anymore, self or asset, we just use the asset. So, and also PyTest give you lots of helper thing. You can write tests easily than the Django test default. Also in Django test is quite uh, not that much informative for me. Like, uh, okay, it's in the right hand side, you can see the dot change to the F because now uh, something happened, right? We make the test up fail in the line 40. And then as you see, it's give you like an assertion errors that decimal not equal. And then, yeah, just that, this is the results. But you will see in the pie test here, when the tests are failed, there's a failure output here when you run pie test, pie test gonna give you like, a, okay, whole information of the test file when it's failed. So it's gonna show you which line it failed and which assets are fails as well. And also show you like a which file failed, which test failed and the results in the bottom line as well. So in PyTest, it's quite like a more giving you like a understanding about like why is error, why is this going on, which test file running or not running. It's quite easy for you when you run the test and you expect that this file should run and this file should not run. In Django, it's quite hard to know that, okay, you add a new test file and then actually it's not run, but in here, PyTest is give you like information like this file run and this test run, something like that. In this point, I want to mention that I don't say the Django test is not informative, it's quite useful also. But in this case, I use PyTest as a test runner. So as a test runner, PyTest doing quite well in its way. But in Django test, it's quite useful in like a, you see that in line number seven in the left-hand side, I still extend test case from the Django because test case in Django is quite powerful. So you can use like a database related testing with test case with effortless. So Django test give you lots of like information like a, and also give you lots of helper and build in something that quite helpful for working with Chango. But in this case, PyTest give you like a how, like a like a good test runner. So with PyTest, you can get more information and understand the output better for sure. Other thing, uh, PyTest also give you like a code coverage thing, like a out of the box. You just line PyTest dash dash cov, and then you're gonna give get like a report of the coverage here. And also can have some function like a, okay, if the coverage is under or something like that, can give you or something. It's quite easy in PyTest, and also you can have like a configuration like a <clears throat> so specific like a okay. This one we should ignore, it's just something like that. So PyTest as a test runner it is quite doing very really great job. Here, so now PyTest give you a better understanding about the test. So if you PyTest, you can have like a nicely output for sure and really in detail. And also they have a lot of plugin. For example, like a beautiful output. So if you want like a more beautiful output, you can use like a PyTest Sugar, which is a plugin one that you just install. And then your test output kind of looks quite nice. Also the test covers, and also a bunch of like a plugin that you can run the test randomly. You can run the test like uh, parallels. And yes, a lot of things, a lot, lot of things. PyTest itself have like a simplest way to assert way, like an assert, just assert. You don't need to have like a sales dot assert equal assert greater than assert lower than something like that. It's just assert and you can use an expression like a simple one, make you quite easy to understand. PyTest also working very well with Django. As you see, you just add the PyTest Django and 
they're gonna show uh, they're gonna give you a bunch of like a helper function and also PyTest as a test runner is working quite well with like a default jungle test. PyTest itself can work like a, with the pure Python flags, Raspberry Pi, also a ORM like a SQL Alchemy and also data science related framework as well. But now on, PyTest give you a lot of like a explicit explanation, right? Now, hope your team will get understand the problem easier than ever, for sure. Now we end with the PyTest. The second one should be continue with the factory boy and fakers. So how the faker and factory boy like a make you write the test easier than before. Let's see some example. So I give some a situation that, okay, we have an e-shop, which is the simplest e-commerce in the world. So here we have a address, customer products and order for the line. Five model here gonna relate that on the e shop here as an example. Order here is look like this. So in order test, you will see in the right hand side, the right hand side here is like, a, okay, this, the test running that you wanna see already, right? And then also the left hand side is the code that, okay, you already see it. So uh, line number nine, line number 12, line number 19, see it like a setup of this individual thing. So here you see like, a, I need to create the object. I need to create like a, address, consumer products, and a lot, lot, lot of things to create only one order. And if I want to test the order, I need to set up the same thing every time. Is it too much, right? Uh, imagine that your app is like a bigger than that. Yes, this is like, like a small one. We have just five model, but when you have like a big thing, like a real e-commerce one, you have maybe like a 50 models, hundreds models. When you just want to create the order, it's gonna look a big one, right? So let's see how I can handle it. We kind of go back a bit to customer test, which is quite simple than the order. In test, in customer test, I have two tests here. As an example, one is like a customer should have one primary address. Another one is customer should have multiple address. Here, when I try to change, to the factory boy, it's gonna look like this. As you see here in the right hand side is a factory boy version. So what the thing I do is just like a, I have a address factory, customer factory, just two things. And here you can see that when I call like an address factory in the line number 28, is the address factory give me the created address object. And then what I'm gonna do next is I have a customer factory, which is I override the primary address with above address. This means uh, the created objects of customer in line 29 already replaced by the, like a, the, the primary asset already replaced one above. That's the thing I want to make sure an asset how it works. So in the line 33, I just assert that the customer primary is actually equal to the address I created. And yes, it's quite simple. See on the left hand side, left hand side, I need to like a, have a name, have a phone, have an email, which is I, I don't care it for now. For this case, I don't care it. I care about primary address. And also above like a line 28 in the address, I need to like a define street, zip code, city, and countries. I don't care about it. I just want some address. And then, yes, Factory Boy helped me to like make the, the, the object creations quite more simple. Same as the customer can have multiple address here. As you see, the customer factory and address factory it just like create something and address factory all right customer here. So I just asked like, okay, this address have asked like a two address and also have like a same address here. So here you can see that 
sorry. And here you can see that it's a different between both of the version. So here I can remove or the property that I don't want and just have like a thing that I want to focus on only the test. Factory Boy helped me a lot to like reduce how to create the test figure for sure. And go back a bit for how Factory Boy work with the Jungle OIMs. So here is quite simple. So you need, what thing you need to need to create the factory class, which is acting the factory, Jungle model factory here. In the line number four, line number 14. Here, you can like a, just define the metadata, which model you want to be a factory. And when you define model, already you need to define the field that okay which one is the default data you want and then you can override later in here you can see a street zip code city country i already defined and amazing thing factory dot sequence this one is a built-in built in method that the factory boy can give you like a sequence of data let's say when you have like an address factory call and then you give an address and another one when you call the address factory the number gonna change to another one like a street one street two street three and street four every time you call it then you're gonna get like a unique uh, id unique already unique property for your object same as the name so the name is like a customer number one two three four five and special thing that if you have like a nested uh, nested or relation, so you can have like a sub factory. Let's say customer factory, when you create customer factory, you're gonna get the primary address automatically. The sub factory means when we call customer, it's gonna create the address for you as well from the address factory automatically. So quite easy and simple here. Also, the one thing that I quite like is faker. So faker means like a, it's gonna help you generate a fake data. Like in, you can align in line 11, line 12, line 13. It's gonna like fake the zip code, fake the city, fake the country, also fake the phone, fake the email. They also have fake that name, fake that random number and have a bunch of code, like a method for generate you like a, almost all of the case. So faker can help you like generate like a realistic value for that field. So it's quite easy. The tip for me is we use faker for all the field. And then if you want to override something, you just override when you call the factory. Now on, we can see the orders. The order now, it should be much more simpler, the order test. You can see in the right hand side, it's quite simple, right? Go back to the left one. You see a lot of thing is going on. It's my like a, you see like a 40 fly up port for just set up and then assert compare with the right hand side. It's just like, okay, I want some address. So address factory, give me one. And then I want some customer, which is override the primary address and just put the address above to Yes, assigned to the primary address. Then the order and order line is the same case. But the special thing that in order line factory, factory boy allow you to have a nested override as well. For sure, if you see the order line factory, order line itself have the products, right? And products should have a price. In order line factory, we can override the price by like a product with double underscore and price, which means this order line factory, we can override the price of products because in this case, we want to calculate the total price. That's why we need to override the price. If I not override the price, it's gonna give me some random things, some random data, random price, as I already create in the products factory. Something like that. Here is an example of like how Factory Boy help you to reduce 
the data figures for all your test cases in the future in Django, as well as in Python in every every frameworks or like even the PL Python as well. Here is a great tool to help you like a write test easily than ever for sure. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about the factory pattern. So why we call them factory pattern? Because it's like a one of the design pattern and this factory also able to use for the factory technique as well. The factory pattern help you to reduce the object construction. So instantly we need to have like a construction. It just return the already created object for you. Like the address factory just return the created object of address for you. Factory cards also can like a have a customize as well. Like a factory boy have a built-in class for you. Like a, okay, we have a batch create, which is like a return. It's gonna return array of that class for you. For example, like I can address dot batch create five, and then have a customer assigned to customer, which is mean I gonna have like a five array of address, which is assigned to the same customer, the same one. So here it is it's quite nice. So the factory can help you like just doing something. You don't need to like manually create five address by your own. Factory boy help you a lot in here. We call the diagram below like the abstract factory. So it's like, a, okay, factory boy is a factory boy abstract one. And then we apply the, this factory to every model we want. Fun facts here, I would say I learned how the benefits of like a factory pattern from the factory boy. So at first I would say, I try to learn like a design pattern, creation pattern, the builder, the factory pattern or the thing. I'm not sure how to use it in the right way, but when I try to use a factory boy, it's a thing that, okay, this is how factory used in the real world. And I can adapt from the tools knowledge to like a principle and all the way back, all the way back as well. So it's like, a, I would say, so it's not necessarily that you can learn principle first or learn the tool first. Maybe sometimes you start with the tools and then you use the tool like a quite often. And then you realize that if somehow use the principle so you can learn principle later as well. It's not that like you need to start from principle for all the time. It's okay to use the tool and then understand how it works. Go back to principle and apply to like a whole engineering things. Yeah, the end is the same. Even you start with the tool of principle. Cool. So summarize how Factory Boy and Faker make you write the test easier than ever. Yes, with the factory pattern here, you can reuse your test figure quite easily, right? Finally, you like just able to focus on what exactly thing you want to test. Like me, I want to test just primary address. So I don't care about the another property the customer have. I just want to test like a primary. So here is a thing that the data figure, the test figure help you. Then now you will forget about how to like a manual data figure, test figure, create manually. No, just use some factory pattern function for you. Yes, and now when the setup is quite fast and quite simpler now, I'm sure that it's more easy to write the test than ever for sure. Cool. All right. We have covered all the tools already. And now we are gonna start with something, something cool, which is another one PyTest make your test is more writing fast. Actually, it's not that like a writing fast, but PyTest can indicate the slow test and also can mark them as well. So PyTest itself is not just give you beautiful output, but the PyTest have like a function that can be 
run the test and see the duration of running your test here. And then if you see some tests are slow, you can mark it. A mark function is something that powerful for me, like in PyTest, PyTest mark is can be like a mark each test or each class to do something. The built-in mark is like you can skip it. You can skip if like you can have the condition or you can like have a parameterize, which is like a hand. In one test, you can have multiple a data come true. Also some the jungle specific as well. Yes, and the thing that's quite important here is you can have a custom max, like a slow unit, unit test, uh, integration, something cool, whatever. If you want max, like a custom max for you, just create it. And then you can run the specific test by the mark, like a Python, oh no, pytest.m flow, pytest.m integration or unit. So for example, like you have a, some class that have only integration test, like a, we have a multiple module in the same test, or you have a test that have a like unit test, just test one thing. As you know, the unit test is run quite fast compared with integration test. So with the max, we can run specific thing like, okay, this time we want to run only unit test. This time we want to run indicate test as well. And this time we want to run holding. So here is the way to improve your test running. The test can get very fast feedback and easy to run if you run with the marks. So now I would say like, if it's easy to run and get the fast feedback enough, people will write, will love to run the test for sure. We can go to some example about like a PyTest duration. Here is a PyTest duration. So when you run the test, like a, for example, when this example, we have a 10 test cases, and then one have like a slow, like you see that we use like a 1.04 second to just set up. And this home is not that slow, but imagine that you have like a thousand of tests you need to like know that which one are test and make your test slow. And you see here, here is a HEP 29 durations, which is a wise use a little bit of time. And we have another one uh, for like a, okay, it's slow. So total of it is a 30 test, right? Why is 30? Because we have 10 pass, we have 10 tests and each one test, we have three more. Like you set up, run, and tear down. So you can, with three things here, you can like specify that, okay, we step the are slow in setup or in running or in tear down. Some tests is slow because it's a lot of tear down thing. You need to like close out the thing. Some tests is slow because the setup thing. So with PyTest, you can specify like a which uh, function that make your test slow. And then in this one, if in case your tests are slow, you can see in the left hand side, the line 39, the pytest.mark.slow, which means you mark that test that, okay, this test is too slow. Okay, we want to run the test, that's the slow one. In the right hand side, we just pytest-m and slow. You can change this to unit. You can change this to integration if you have a mark, a custom mark for you. And then you can see the result. It's run only one test and my test is deselected. It's a good thing, right? You can run specific tests by the mark. And then now on, people on your team, people on like uh, around you, the software engineering uh, colleagues can run the test quite easily. Now, when it's run easily and get the fast feedback, people will love it for sure. Okay, this is a technique I want to share you today. We have a PyTest to get a better understanding about the test and output. We have a factory boy and faker for help you create a test figure quite easy and simple than ever for sure. And the PyTest to indicate the slow test and also have a max for like a run specific maps, forget the <clears throat> what exactly you want to run and fast feedback enough. Now it's the last point, how to adapt this technique above gradually. So 
start on your team. This is the first thing I want to I will like to everyone to to know. Like, a, okay, we want the feedback from the test, but actually we want the feedback from your team, team member, the colleagues, as well. And yeah, like I said, after your team print, like, a, how about the test now? Is it something can improve? Is it slow? Is it like a big? Is it like a something that unused or we need to remove or something like that? If you have no idea, I recommend to go back to page nine to eleven and pick some question and question this to the team. Maybe in a way tool, maybe in a tech huddle uh, discussion or something like that. And one thing I want you all to focus on is to take a baby step, like a don't adapt it all in once because you cannot focus. And then if you adapt them all like a one time, it's gonna look like like. You're gonna focus on the refactoring most of the time. And for me, it is not that good. We as a developer, we want to deliver something the customer to customer like a have a value. So the refactoring is benefit us, but not the customer much. So I would suggest to adapt like a baby step and use just like a 10 or 20 minutes, uh, 10 and 20% of total working time to like spend on refactoring. And last one, this slide is not like a how-to thing. It's, it's more on like, like a guideline that I want to show you like a possibility way we can do in improve our test. Yes, in the world, in the internet, they have lots of way, many, many way we can improve our test. Do you try to like a indicate, like categorize the test as a test pyramid? with like a end to end integration. And then the last one is unit test. Is the chef of your test is like a triangle already. And maybe if like a unit test use a lot of time because you have a many, many services, look at the, like a, the contract test that you're looking on it or the explanation test or something like that. So it's had many, many way to like make your test like get more confidence also make your test quite run faster or easier. Like a contract test, if you spend time on like end to end a lot, if you split to like a contract test, it's more on like a, you're gonna get the fast feedback than E to E for sure. With like a quite same amount of confidence on your test. Here is something I want to mention. So let's adapt it, take a baby step. <clears throat> okay, recap, or oh, we have done in this talk. So what is a refactoring? Yes, refactoring is like, a, we want to make a code like a clean. We want to easy to understand and also easy to extend. The test refactoring is the same. We want to, it's easy to understand. It's easy enough to write, to start writing tests. It's easy to run and get the fast feedback. Yes, and few solution, few some technique I tell you is like a, using PyTorch, PyTest to get some like a better understanding. And also you use a factory boy and faker to get like a more easily way to write a test and test figure. And also like a PyTest to use a, like a indicate your slow test and mark them also like at running the PyTest in like a using marks and Last, last point, the how we adapt this technique about gradually. So this is the end. It's my pleasure to share this to you all. So thank you so much. My contact is below. And if you have some feedback or have some suggestion or you want to discuss about like a related about the test or related about the refactoring Python, also a uh, whole system like a whole web development thing, I'm quite welcome to like a, just ping me and we can have this class. So cool. I hope in this round, we have like a Q and A session and also I can put some feedback form for you. Nice. And thank you so much for joining my talk and listen to me today. Stay safe people and see you soon. So thank you so much for, for having you today. And um, so your talk is about like uh, use uh, create test, right? Um, yes. So like um, 
Can you can, um? Hmm? Yes, go ahead. I mean, I can tell a little bit about the talks. So. Uh -huh, yes. Yeah, if you want to. So this talk is about uh refactor the test. It's mainly focused on the test. Like, I guess every talk is focused on like a refactoring course already, but no one like it. talk about refactoring test much. So I picked that topic. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yes. Uh yes, my my talk is like a more focused on like or how to make the test like more readable, extendable, and also like a, uh, yes, and find the root cause easily, something like that. Mm -hmm. Like normally, like for like developing software, they might uh did not like use like a test driven um development, right? They just like finish product and then like have a like tester to like um test and write a test script test kit and then just test it at almost the end of of the product but for you it's like you have like you make a unit test or like test during the development so can you share a little bit about your experience that uh, like your ex your past experience about using like this kind of um uh like practice sure so the test here is yeah long time ago i'm also used the test like like a normal people like a it's not normal people i mean like a, okay I, I developed the application done and then like they have a test later and uh next time i do a bit later like a, i do a little bit better which is like okay i decide the test first like okay i decide to program decide the test and then write the code and test at the same time i'm also the one who like haven't haven't do with the TDD or test driven development much because sometimes it's it's hard but sometimes it's easy. But yes, think think about the test for it is a thing that 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 that's quite important here. And also mm -hmm. like the problem is is the problem is not the starting point like when you have a test and you have a code in the starting point. So it's quite easy. Like it just 10.5, like uh, including a test and production code, right? But once it's going to go big, like 105, 1,000 of the file in the system is going to be hard. So we mostly use the test for refactoring the code, but we didn't like look back on the test and then see that how the test look like now. It's a lot of use, uh, unused tests, lots of like a duplicate code in the test because we just add the test. Add, add it but yeah and then yeah it's like sometimes it's, it's hard to to find out if something happened mm. uh -huh. so for those who just come in so we have uh, our speaker first with us he just talking about refactory um test so if you have any questions just feel free to raise your hand and then we will like unmute your microphone and then you can ask questions anytime okay so while we are waiting, so I will ask first more about um, your talk, right? We just talk about like, uh, think more about test first. And then um, you, you mentioned in your talk is like about Django test and like PyTest. PyTest make it more easier for create test case, right? Yes, um, the PyTest is like, uh -huh. I mean, yeah. sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, can you just explain more? How do you feel or you explain and make it like, more easier yes so the pytest itself is help to you get like better understanding about the, the test and what's going on on the test so in in python and like a like a standard library like a unit test in python and also Django tests which is extend from that unit test and it's good when you write the test but the, the test runner is not that good much like it give you like a, a little bit of information when something fails, even when you run the test, it show like a just dot 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 dot, dot represent that like which file is run or something like that. So, I mean, sometimes it is hard to uh, see that uh, what is the problem. Like a, when I write the code, is it my test run properly or something like that? It is quite hard. So. 
So Pytest is, I would say the Pytest for me is more like more like a test runner. So with Pytest, when we run Pytest, is is it's gonna show you a lot of information. So like uh, which asserts uh, fail, which file, and uh, how many files we have, and which file is fail, something like that. It is showed you a lot of information, and and the fairly is work together with the unit test library quite well. So it's not that replacement for me. It's, it's more like an integration between two of them, the unit test Python library and also the PyTest library. Mm -hmm. That's good. So it's make more like easier to find like maybe root cause or maybe like some problem like with your test when you test fail. Mm -hmm. Yes. For if for those who have any questions, just okay, please raise your hand anytime. And so you also mentioned about tools like uh, Factory Boy, right? That generate like object something for you that so that you can no need to uh, create mock up data, a lot of mock up, and you can focus on just only some like uh, like data that you want to test, and also like using Faker also. So can you tell us more about um, like your experience or anything that you find out from uh, using these, um, uh, what's called like tool? Uh, okay, so we can go with the, the faker first. So the faker is the, how to say? So the faker one is the, the faker uh, just that and, and we can use that to like adapt to like many many purposes. Like uh, okay, we can use at the preview data, or we can use at like a, a seeding data when you want to like a test. You can you can run the app for the test purpose, and then you seeding data to your database. Like a, uh, for the testing purpose, like you have pre data before. So use faker is more like a, a help you to don't think much on the test data. So it helps you also on like uh, make the data like a difference as well. So normally we have data like a, we have name and test name, surname, <laughs> test name, something like that. It is, it's, it's something that uh, unmeaningful and, and not critical. So use faker is a bit help, but mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's, it's not help that much, but it's help like a, it's better than nothing. For sure. And also another one is Factory Boy. The Factory Boy is one thing that I quite like and mention. It's have only in Python, right? Because uh, I'm not sure why, but it's the way to take the data in, in Django or Python is it is they use this way. So it's more like an OOP thing that we can mock something and then uh, use that instance object to do something like that. So the factory boy is the tool that, uh, let's say we want to test the orders or we want to test like uh, uh, the user, one user. We, the one user may, maybe need to have like a users and we need to have like a credit card address and we need, we need we need to have like a more more a lot of data and, and it's a lot of object to just create one user. Right? Also the mm -hmm. orders, like one order you need to create like, okay, you need to have customer first, you have to have like products, you need to have like a pricing and all the stuff that that's quite hard. So Factory Boy come to help you like create the data easily. Actually the, the Factory Boy is come from the factory pattern, which is uh, the the one of the programming techniques, but the factory boy is already adapt from that and make it generic for use in many many purpose. So factory boy is gonna help you a lot to to create your test object. Yeah, sure. make it easier. Yes. But you can have a, like a main factory and you can have a sub factory, and you can like focus only something that you only want to test, and you don't need to like create like data that oh. I need to just, but it's a uh, fake also random data for you. You just override it and then it's, it's make your life easier, right? When you want to test. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, and so, mm-hmm. and also like uh, before I before we go to talk, I decide mm-hmm. to think about like another test report, which is we call explanation test, which is like the test that you act like a real user, like, uh, explore mm-hmm. the app like uh, randomly input randomly data or something like that. So. We also use a faker on this point as well. Sometimes, like in end-to-end tests, we can like randomly add the data. Like uh, we use faker dot name, right? It's gonna generate you a, like a different name in different languages as well. So we can use that, like a randomly input data to your test, and then you can see that if it's that user feel that data is gonna break your app or not or something like that. So mm-hmm. it is a one tool that help you to do explanation tests as well. But I haven't mentioned in the talk because it it may be too much. <laughs> yeah, there are many ways to test, right? Right, yes. different approach, and also it depends on the team also that like make decision which one that you want to apply, which um a method or like ways that you want to apply. So uh, first, you want to emphasize something, like. Related to your talk, or anything you want to share with anyone? Uh, I mean, the thing that I want to like uh, highlight, I, I would say highlight in the in this talk is more on about it. The the fact the test refactoring. So, so the value of the the test refactoring is not just like make your test like easy to understand, easy to write, easy to run. So. Like I mentioned in the 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 talk, uh, when the test itself is easy to run enough, like you can run in like a one minute and then everything is done. You can run specific tests easily. You have many many way to run the test. Like you can run only unit test, run only integration test, run only end to end, or run with this tag, run with that tag. So it's going to help your team like fun enough to run the test. Like for me, previously when, before I joined the Unity, like I, I see a lot of like a, uh, working on Southern, I go to some company and, and see that like many, many company that I work with, like uh, they, their test is quite run so too slow. So just some more improvement in the teams, in the client, like, uh, update the test is quite run easier. I know like a test one, the test run is like 20 minutes like that, and then we can like run only the specific part that we want to care. It's make just one minute and then like everyone in the team is quite happy and, and they love to run the test more. So mm. this is a one thing that value to business like, you know, Normally uh-huh. you wait for twenty minutes to get the feedback, but now you wait for like a one minute, something like that. And yeah. also yeah. easy to write enough is the thing that if the test is easy to write enough, like uh, you have a many many test utils for you and your team. So everyone wants to write a test. Everyone wants just to like okay, import something something and add the test. Is is easier so. People like to write the test, right? And also understand, which is like, it may not good for us much because we already understand what the test, right? But as a new joiner, when when someone join the team, so it's a this is my experience from from consultancy. So when I join the team and I go out and like, a, so when I join, it's many many new joiner joins as well, or they join later me sometime and. If the test is so easy to understand enough, so it's easy to new joiner can like that. just take a look at the test in one hour and then they know how to test it. So yes, we have new test engineer <laughs> more. Um, yeah, so that's good, right? Yeah, I remember you mentioned about marks, right? That you just mark only one part of the code of the test that you can test. So you can see like, so maybe some part of the test is like run is take time, but you can focus on more. These two that you introduce to all of us is help us to save time and maybe help the team is easy to understand and encourage to test more. 
right? Using test more. Mm -hmm. That's very good. And thank you so much for like share your experience and also knowledge about that. Mm -hmm. And 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 the last one that you mentioned is also very very good, right? We have to refactoring, even coding or even test case. So like when like new one come or even like you well document it, so that it's easy to understand also. Mm -hmm. I think we run out of time, but we start a little bit late, just maybe one or two minutes. So you want to say anything to everyone before we close this session first? Sure. So one word for saying in this talk is mean, yes, uh, refactor the test is not value for the dev. It's also value for the business as well, like I mentioned. So please consider it and make the life easier team. Oh, I see Jean mentioned something in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Another module question that you have encountered is the hypothesis. Uh, I wouldn't know. I haven't, I haven't seen this one before, but I promise that we will look at it. It's something like a more... Hmm. The hypothesis. Yes, I haven't used it before, but I promise I will look at it then. It should be something that quite value for me. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much first, and thank you everyone for watching us and joining us. Uh, is it okay for if someone have question they can ask you to, or contact you directly? Sure. I also put my contact in the in the who below profile. Oh, he's gone already. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so if for those who want to contact first, hey, hey welcome back first. Yes, I accidentally <laughs> clicked out. <laughs> okay. Sure. So if you want to contact mm -hmm. me, see me in my profile, and I hope I add more like a or contact point in place already. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you first for having you today. And Jean, thank you so much for being our moderator also. Thank you, everyone. And like, bye-bye. Have fun. Have fun. <laughs>